who is the MVP of the NBA, Rick? I mean, you're seeing what Russell Westbrook's okay. doing. Uh, okay. what, what's your two cents on that? I'm glad you brought it up. Sure. I've been saying this for decades. For the NBA to have an MVP for the, for the, for the season for one player in a league that has two conferences – that don't play the same schedule is the most ludicrous, ridiculous thing in the world. They have to have an MVP of the Eastern Conference and an MVP of the Western Conference. And that is something that should have been done decades ago. It makes no sense at all, okay, because the level of competition you're playing against, you're playing more against the teams, you only play twice against the teams in the other conference. How do you make an evaluation? It's not right. It had been simple last year. Do it. It's, you know, it's just the, the, the winner, when Steph won, it would have been LeBron in the East and Steph in the West. It's simple. And then you have the MVP of the of the, of the uh, playoffs. So it just makes so much sense. And the NBA would be smart because now you get another sponsor to sponsor the MVP of the East and the sponsor to sponsor the MVP of the West. So they make more money doing it, and it's a fairer way to do it. Uh, right now, it's a situation where you have a lot of stuff in the West that would be tough, mainly because of the play that you have of – Certainly of, uh, of Westbrook, who's, who's remarkable what he's doing. It's truly remarkable what he's been able to uh, to accomplish, although I still don't think it can be compared totally to what Oscar did. But why, why not? Think, well, very simple. Okay? He's trying to get triple doubles. It's a concerted effort to do it. Oscar didn't do that. Oscar just played. And the last time I checked, I don't really believe that Russell, and this is taking nothing away from what Russell has done. I want to make that perfectly clear. I, I admire and respect what this guy has done. It's, it's a remarkable accomplishment. He's not driving against Will Chamberlain, against Nate Thurman, against Bill Russell, against Walt Bellamy, against so many great centers that would probably prevent him from getting a lot of the baskets that he's got. <laughs> to do that eight, nine times against guys of that stature. So it's been a lot easier in that regard for him. But the guy's remarkable what he's done. It's an amazing accomplishment, plus the fact back in the days when Oscar was doing it, the travel, we had four games in five nights, traveling by buses, trains, uh, you know, getting to bed at one in the morning after a game and getting up at six to fly on a commercial flight. These guys are out after the game, charter flights, getting a good night's sleep. I mean, it's so much different now than what it was back in those days. So that takes nothing away from what he did, but don't please compare it and say, you know, that it compares with what Oscar was able to do. It's, uh, it's just a notch below it. Well, that, and that mandates for me to ask you the, this question before I let you go, Rick, uh, into that uh, New York afternoon. Uh, what What's your two cents on uh, players resting, star players getting rest? I can't and relate to it, Rich. I, I totally can't relate to it. The Rich Eisen Show, weekdays at noon Eastern on Audience.